Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. We are starting a new series today that will go on for the next I don't know how many weeks, and if this is a hit, I will begin uploading three days a week. Cool? I'm not going to acknowledge members and whatnot in these, as those will be in the long-form videos later. So, let me shut up, because it's time to get down to the nitty-gritty. Are you ready? Let's all have a 30-minute quickie. I'm a psychiatric nurse, and early in my career, I worked at a residential mental health facility. One of our residents was an elective mute, which means that he didn't, wouldn't, or couldn't talk. But there were no medical reasons as to why. He had spoken earlier in his life, in fact. Seemed quite normal back then, with the exception of being close to seven feet tall. He'd been raised in the Deep South and joined the military when he was 19. But one night, he completely vanished. He was declared AWOL, and eventually, he was declared missing and dead. Ten years later, a seven-foot-tall man walked into a veterinary hospital emergency room in my part of the Midwest and said to the receptionist, my name is Marion Duchene. That's not his real name, by the way. And I've been dead for 10 years. Those were the last words he ever spoke. He was covered with dust, and he was wearing the same clothes he'd been reported wearing the night he vanished. His social security number had been used, and he had no identification on his person. However, they were able to identify him, I guess via fingerprints. The family was notified, but they said they had already grieved their lost man and that whomever was claiming to be him simply could not be. They demanded not to be contacted again. Marion paced all day, every day, moving his mouth that looked like talking or muttering, but no sound came out. He had an unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open, as if he were laughing heartedly. But not even a breath could be heard. If I walked to him... He appeared to listen, periodically throwing his head back in that laughter-mimicking way of his. Various medications were tried, but they did not affect him, either positively or negatively. Occupational therapy did nothing because Marion would just grin, and unless told to stay put, he'd get up and start pacing again. On my last day at that job, the last thing I saw was Marion pacing in the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wonder if all along I'd been dealing with a ghost. All these years later, I still don't know. A good friend of mine told me this story years ago. He is the stereotypical old, big, bad trucker. I've seen some weird stuff with him while driving in South Texas along the border. He never batted an eye, but while telling me this story, he had goosebumps and a concerned expression, which from this guy is about the equivalent of a trembling lip and shit-stained pants. I'll tell this story in the first person as he told it to me. Years ago in the late 1990s, I was on my way from the house in Central Texas, heading to Laredo to pick up a load. It was early morning, around 4 or 5. I had just come off a string of days at home, so I know I wasn't tired. I am on one of those two-lane winding roads in the middle of absolute bumfuck nowhere. When I see something on the side of the road at the edge of my high beams, at first I just thought it was roadkill, as is usually the case. As I get closer, I see that it is roadkill, and there's someone crouching over the deer carcass. I remember thinking either this guy's taking the antlers as a trophy or he's just plain fucking sick. As I got closer, still, I could now see that this guy was eating the fucking deer. He's pulling chunks of meat from the stomach and bringing them up to his face. At this point, he stops mid-motion and looks up at me. Not at my truck, but directly at me. He or it stands up. And that's when I see that this fucking huge brown thing was covered in hair. I remember thinking at this point, oh, fuck no. This thing is standing on the tiny shoulder looking at me. 
By this point, maybe three seconds have passed, and I'm about to the point in the road he's standing at. I don't even think of stopping. In fact, I'm starting to lay on it and get the hell out of there. As I'm passing it, it's looking directly at me. Again, not at the truck, but at me. It's looking through the driver's side windshield at me. He absolutely has the intelligence to know that there's a driver in there and knows where I'm sitting. As I start to pass him, I can still see its head above the hood of the old needle nose Pete. It's an old truck design where the hood goes straight out into the windshield, known for being tall and difficult to see around. This thing is fucking giant. I remember seeing what looked like human intelligence in its eyes. It still scares the shit out of me. I'm sorry if this was a long story, but I wanted to share the same horror with you. I am 25. I live in Utah, and I'm curious if any of you have seen anything like this before. I'm pretty sure I saw a Wendigo or a Skinwalker. I know it sounds strange or crazy. I don't really believe in those things, and I'm regularly skeptical when it comes to the paranormal. This happened to me when I was 17 and in high school and living with my parents. My house at the time was in a very small town. The backyard faced open, empty fields and mountains for miles before you reached another civilization at all. My best friend lived next door and shared this field as our backyard in a way. I have to explain that the house sat was built on a different street that ended in the field with a small cul-de-sac. I think there was supposed to be more houses built down the street to expand the town, but they clearly never got around to it. So his driveway was basically in this cul-de-sac, even though no other houses were built there. This matters later in the story. I used to stay the night at my friend's house a lot in high school because I didn't have the best relationship with my parents. Every once in a while, we would wake up to hear dragging and a weird gargling sound from the back porch. His room was a basement room with the window well to the back porch. It would happen maybe a couple times a month, but whenever he would gather the courage to check, nothing would be back there. This happened for years. One night haunts my friend and I to this day. My friend was getting ready to move, and we would stay up all night playing games and watching movies. We decided to go on a music drive to just vibe out. So we hopped in his truck, with high beams on and swung out of the driveway, turning them on towards the field to use the roundabout. The light illuminated this thing. It looked like a person, but it wasn't. It was naked on all fours, abnormally large, particularly its limbs that seemed to fold in under itself in an unnatural way. Its pale skin clung to it like it had to be stretched onto it. But the part that still sends shivers down my spine is its face. Its jaw hung open to this gaping black maw, like a snake unhinging its jaw to eat, its black eyes glistening in the light as it looked at us. But just as it turned to look at us, it quickly scurried back towards almost like it was on rewind into the brush of the field. My friend and I were pale as ghosts, we both looked at each other like, did you see that too? We were shaken. Let's just say we tried to have a good rest of the night, but we couldn't believe what we saw. We ended up just sitting there in his basement with guns ready and waiting to hear the gargling and dragging again. But we never did. Sorry that it's not very climactic, but it's the truth. I now don't live in that town anymore. There are times when I visit there, though. The empty field still feels like it's watching, waiting. Even though I can't see it, I can still feel like it's out there. My story is a little boring, but it just happened to me on Wednesday, so here you go. 
I was rock climbing with two other guys in Colorado and was belaying one of them when the two of us on the ground heard something weird. The commands we use to communicate that we are safe at the top of the route are, name of the guy on the ground, off belay, which prompts the belayer to unclip the rope from his belay device so the climber can pull slack out of the rope. The response to that command is, name of the guy at the top of the route, belay off. The climber was approximately 40 meters up on a 50 meter route. I didn't know this at the time. The rope stopped moving, which isn't uncommon when someone is having a hard time with a move or is setting up an anchor which is what I thought was going on. And then we heard it, a voice that sounded way closer to the ground, like close enough we could have heard a shouting conversation, and way further left off route of where the climber should have been. It said, Tommy sticks off belay. I looked at the other guy in our climbing party who was just as confused as I was. He said to me, oh, um, what the fuck was that? And we decided where the climber should be at this time and that we shouldn't be able to hear him that well. The rope still wasn't moving, but I decided to keep him on belay. I figured it would be best to keep him safe and just feed slack through my belay device in the event that it wasn't him. Turns out it wasn't. A few moments later, the rope started moving again later followed by a faint syllable counted, Tommy Sticks off belay. That sounded way more like what it should have. We didn't really think anything of it, but we had been traveling down that wall and hit a few routes without seeing anyone. We also had a friend just a few months ago that burned in on a route when someone took him off belay when he wasn't safe. I remember seeing a video of a hiker or rancher or something, walking down the road when he hears a voice of a woman calling him off the road. The man stops to try to figure out what's going on, then just gets out of there because of how weird it was. Is there a specific cryptid that mimics the voice of a person? I worked in a group home for kids under the age of five. It was Christmas day and I worked the night shift. There was only one toddler in the house overnight as the rest of the kids went home to visit their parents. I was the only staff on shift as that's all that was needed for an overnight with one child in the home. The home had lots of ghost stories associated with it. I had experienced a few creepy incidents, but this one became the most memorable and most shared ghost story of the house. I arrived on shift just before midnight, completed shift change with the other staff. They went home. I did my cleaning and food prep and decided to put on a movie. I did a bed check when I first got there and then in the middle of gathering the laundry from the upstairs rooms where I saw the one toddler sleeping away in his crib. While I was watching the movie, I heard a loud bang from upstairs. My worst fear was that the toddler somehow got out of his crib and fell. I was getting up to go check on him, and I heard something running across the floor above me, loud enough to sound like a small child. So I thought, oh no, he's out of his crib, and he's going to hurt himself running around in the dark. I ran up the stairs, two at a time, and busted into his room, only to find him sleeping soundly in his crib. I was terrified, put on a pot of coffee, and jittered the night away until the kiddo woke up at around 6 a.m. The rest of the bed checks that night were very quick, and I made sure I turned on all the lights. As a forest worker, I actually have a few creep you out stories. The biggest one was in northeastern British Columbia, up near the Alberta border, about as far north as Fort Nelson. But no summer roads because it is a giant swamp up there. We flew in with a helicopter and two of us girls got dropped in a block. 
The helicopter dropped us all first thing in the morning and was coming back in the afternoon because he had another job in the middle. So my partner goes one way to one end of the block and I head to the far end to start so we can work towards each other. I get down there and doing my thing and suddenly I hear screaming, yelling, swearing, and just a lot of bad, all in a female's voice. Now the lady I worked with was not a swearing person and I had never seen her angry and this person was very angry. I tried yelling back to see what was wrong. No actual answer. Then my partner radios me to find out what is wrong as she can hear this in the wind. I had to explain to her that it was not me either. We decided to work together that day. I never quit until that helicopter came back and dropped off a load of our guys to help us finish up our block. Just before they landed, we heard a group of quads speed away in the bush. We ended up with about 15 people on that block to finish it. The helicopter flew around to find the person to see if they were in any need of help. Could not even see a trail out of the block. The roads were through pure musky swamp and not even passable by foot due to standing water and quick mud and saying that one is my creepiest I have ever been shot at. Had a pack of wolves track me for hours after killing something in my block, been stalked by bears, and found dead animals, including the one that was gutted and dropped so close to the driver's door of our truck, we had to crawl in from the passenger side. And my poor coworker that I had to phone the RCMP for, one day as he came back, to the office, freaked out because he found a couple of pairs of skeletal feet in running shoes one day. Turned out, after some investigation, someone had shoved bear paws into shoes, which just begs the question, why? At least they were not human. This was in British Columbia at the start of the feet washing up on shore on the coast as well. The first job I had was at a pizza place in my hometown. It's a really small town with a little over 1,000 people. We're right next to a main highway that's about 30 minutes away from a major city. One night, around September or October, I'm working with two other coworkers and our manager. Our whole shift had been pretty slow and we were getting ready to close at nine. At 8.30 p.m., two men and a little girl around the age of seven or eight, came in. I go to the front and ask them if they need help with anything or if they're going to place an order. One of the men, the shorter one, says that they are just passing through. He then asks about the prices of different items on the menu. He also asks, what time do we close? I answer and he just says, okay, and walks away to sit down with the little girl at a booth. The taller man then leaves the building and gets into their car parked out front. The smaller man gets up after about five minutes, whispers something to the little girl, then leaves. My coworkers and I are watching this all go down and talking about how strange it is. The little girl gets up and starts dancing around to the radio station we have playing. After a couple of minutes of this, I walk up to her and ask her if she's hungry or if she wants a drink. She said she only wants water which I get for her, and she takes it back to the booth and sits down. I ask her who she's waiting on, and she says, her dad. My coworkers and I are starting to get worried for her because the two men haven't came back yet, and it's 8.50 p.m. We start to think that neither one of them were her dad at all. My manager decides to call the police. Our town is too small for our own police station, so we have to wait for them to come from the next town over, which takes at least 15 minutes. I go to sit with her at the booth. I'm making small talk with her, trying to make sure she's safe and nothing happens before the cops get there. In the middle of our conversation, she gets up and says she has to leave. My manager and I try to tell her she needs to stay in the restaurant until her dad comes back but she starts crying and screaming and insists on leaving. 
A couple days later, my manager said the cops found her walking down the road alone later that night. We never heard any more information about that situation afterwards. I just hope she is safe now. Dear men who were just passing through, let's not meet again. About eight years ago, I was in class at WBU in a building on downtown campus overlooking the river. It was probably at about 8.30 to 9 a.m., a clear day with the sun beginning to rise. I was seated near the front, and the projector and fluorescent classroom lights were rather bright, so to give my eyes a little break, I turned to look out the window. After a moment or two, an object appeared and slowly flew past the window. I was looking straight at it and watched it for about 15 seconds as it passed the two sets of windows and then went out of sight. It was football-shaped, brush metallic, the golden light of the sunrise reflected off of it, with no obvious wings, tail, propellers, or light. It made no sound that I could tell and appeared to be on a gradual descent. This was mid-lecture, and of course, no one else noticed. The professor was a bit serious, and I couldn't scream out, Oh my God, you guys look at that, it's a UFO, in the middle of class. I was dying, though, that no one else had seen it because I wanted to go. What the hell was that? In any case, I never in a million years thought I would see a UFO. I had always leaned toward the feeling that people were making UFO stories up or they were imagining things. I have no idea what it was that I saw, other than being 100% sure that I did see it. I got such a good look at it that I was able to notice all the details. This was pre-drones, but it also looked nothing like any drone I've ever seen. And it was definitely not an airplane. Hey there, everyone. I have a very short but creepy story. I live in a town in Canada with a population of 36,000. The town that I live in is known for the strange and extremely creepy people that roam the street, both night and day. When I was 10 years old on a summer night, about 8 p.m., I was watching the sun as it went down. I was outside the front of my house by myself riding my skateboard. I was about to go inside before it got too dark when I noticed someone out of place. Across the street, I see an old beige minivan with very tinted windows. I notice some sort of light or flash from the driver's window, almost as if someone was taking a picture. Before I know it, an old lady opens the door of the van and starts walking extremely fast towards me. It was happening so fast that I didn't even get a good look at her. As soon as she was walking fast towards me, I grabbed my skateboard and run inside, locking the door. Once I was inside, I ran to my bedroom at the front of the house. To my dismay, the van was gone. I've never told anyone about this encounter because I always thought I was overthinking it. I never knew the lady's intention, and honestly, I don't want to. Creepy lady with the minivan. Let's not meet. All right, everyone. Next week, there will be more stories. I do apologize for this one being shorter than 30 minutes, but I think we all got our quickie fix. <laughs> anyway, as usual... Stay tuned for your dose of vocal melatonin that comes later in the day. More 30-Minute Quickies next Wednesday.